we were talking this morning, the speaker spoke about identity and multiculturalism. And um, I'm going to speak about uh, an example of how an identity is forged. And by forged, I mean both meanings of the word. How identities are created and how identities are counterfeited. How identities are forged. I'm going to give an example of a particular identity, and that's the identity that I've studied my, during my life, Jewish identity. And I first want to uh, preface my remarks by saying that identity is a very interesting thing. This morning we were talking about how people, how identity is really an illusion. Uh, people have characteristics, but to put the characteristics together in, in sort of a uh, limited liability corporation type of way where the whole is greater than the sum of the parts, that really, ex that really uh, explains who you are, is really an illusion. But there's a reason why people think that way. There's a philosophical question that I'm going to present here, and if we have the answer to that, we'll understand why people are so into their identities. Okay, so this is my left arm, right? There's me and my left arm. That means this left arm is a possession of me. I have legs, they're also mine. I have a right arm. And all of these are possessions of me. Now, if I list all the parts that I'm made up of, and I say, these are my eyes, this is my nose, this is my mouth, this is my personality. Um, these are all possessions, but where's the me? If you change my hand, or you change my legs, or you change the color of my eyes, does that change the me? Well, no, my eyes just changed color. But at what point do you change the me? What can you change about me that will make me into a different person? See, that's my identity. I say my personality, the me, is my, is my identity. My arms, my legs, my everything. So where's the me? Who's the me? That me is my identity, and people are, are uh, instinctively believe that they have an identity separate and independent of their characteristics because of this. What ch if something changes about me, do I change? Somebody gets into an accident, he wakes up and um, he has prosthetic legs. He didn't change who he is, his legs changed. What has to change about a person that changes who he is, or is there nothing? Well, if there's nothing that can change who a person is, then, then what makes a person the person? What is his identity? You see, that's the question that people are, are haunted by. And that's why people feel instinctively, they may be wrong, but there's an instinct that people feel that there's something about them that's greater than just merely the sum of their characteristics. Now, the question is, how do they determine what that thing is? And... Um, we're going to start with Jewish identity. We had mentioned this morning about Jewish art or Jewish literature. And uh, the question is, what is, what makes somebody Jewish? But I don't mean how does a person know he's Jewish. I want to know the definition of a Jew. And Jewish identity is a very good place to start because it's the only type of identity that I know of that people can't decide what it is. The Jews are always arguing, you will see articles all over, the place. are Jews an ethnicity, are Jews a religion, are Jews a tribe, are Jews a race. I don't know any other category of people that they can't figure out what they are. Can anybody not figure out what they are? Only the Jews. It's a weird thing. And, and, and they've been around so long, they've had such an a, a exclusive identity, they've been so identifiable, yet they can't figure out what they are. This doesn't make any sense. I'm going to explain why it doesn't make sense. Um, I'm going to explain why it happened, even though it doesn't make sense. Well, I'm going to go through the different ideas of Jewish identity, and I'm going to show why none of them really work. And then I'm going to explain what Jewish identity really is. Is Jewishness an ethnicity? Well, it. See, in order for a definition to define something, by definition, it has to describe every member of the population. You can have an exception to a rule, but you can't have an exception to a definition. If I say the definition of a chair is something with four legs and a back, then all chairs have to have four legs and a back, otherwise it's not a chair. So whatever I'm going to say is Jewish identity, there cannot be any exceptions. 
So let's define Jewish identities and ethnicity. Does it make any sense that an Ethiopian Jew and a Yemenite Jew has the same ethnicity as a German Jew or an American Jew or Russian Jew? Are you going to tell me that Ivanka Trump, for example, who identifies as a Jew, is of the same ethnicity as the Yemenite Jews in Yemen? In what sense do they have the same ethnicity? Certainly they're not of the same race. Uh, Jews are, we have Jews of all sorts of races. We have black Jews, we have white Jews, we have all, Jews of all races. So Jew can't be a race. It's not an ethnicity. And if, Jews, if somebody wants to define Jews as a religion, which is the most logical and straightforward definition, then you're going to have the question that many people raise. Um, Dennis Prager recently, who I'm not a fan of, recently wrote an article in the New York Times last week claiming that the Jews are not just a religion because if they were, then you would not have atheist Jews. And you have Jews who are atheists. So if they're not a religion and they're not an ethnicity and it's not a race and it's not a tribe either, it's not a family. You can convert to Judaism, and you can't, you can't convert to a, a, a blood family. You can't convert to an ethnicity. And if you can convert to a family, like an adopted child, you see, adopted children are not the same as children. Adopted children means that by law you have to treat this child as if he was a biological child. That's not a convert to Judaism. A convert to Judaism doesn't, is not a person who the law says you have to treat as if they're Jewish. They're actually Jewish. And, and secondly, even if you're going to assume that, that, that there is some kind of body of law that says you have to treat them as they're Jewish, what body of law is there? The religion? Remember, they're atheist Jews. So if you don't believe in any religion, how in the world can you convert to Jews? Who's the one that determines uh, what the conversion process is? What does it take? And, and you can convert to Judaism, but we all know you can't convert out of Judaism. Like, who decided that? How about another question? Someone's mother is Jewish and his father is not. Is the child Jewish? Well, there's laws about that. So if it's a race or an ethnicity, then there's no such question. It depends on the race or the ethnicity of the child. But there are laws. Traditionally, Judaism has recognized maternal lineage. But and now there are certain strains of ideologies that identify as Judaism that recognize also paternal lineage. But who makes these rules? Jews have no infrastructure. There's no Pope of the Jews. And if there was a Pope of the Jews, that would be a religious, a religious position. And if you're an atheist, you don't believe in it anyway. So what is it? Well, I'll explain to you what it is. And I'll explain to you how all these identities uh, came into being and how things got so confused. Jewishness is, there's only one consistent definition. It's religious doctrine. It means as follows. There are no identif identifiable characteristics that all Jews share. That means there's no such thing as a definition of a Jew in terms of characteristics. It's not an ethnicity, it's not a race, it's not a religion. But it's, who is a Jew is religious doctrine. It means as follows. Every religion has doctrines. So Judaism has, for example, you have to eat food that's kosher. What's considered kosher food? Well, whatever the religion says is kosher food, that's kosher food, right? A person, a scientist can't say, well, I'm an atheist, but I'm going to have my own definition of kosher food, because the whole concept of kosher was something invented by the religion. That's religious doctrine. Um, what's a, at what year a boy gets bar mitzvahed? The whole concept of bar mitzvah, bar mitzvah means somebody who's now obligated to fulfill the mitzvahs. Bar is Aramaic for son, and mitzvah means the commandment. So it means whoever now is obligated in the commandments, it's religious doctrine. A Jew is somebody who's obligated to fulfill the obligations of Jews. There are 613 obligations with thousands of subcategories. There are seven obligations that the Torah has for non-Jews. 613 for Jews, and who is obligated in the 613? That the Torah decides, and whoever the Torah decided is obligated in 613 commandments, that's the definition of a Jew. That's it. It's religious doctrine. If you don't believe in the Torah, you really don't believe in Jewishness. If you don't believe in the Torah, then you don't believe that God sent manna down in the desert. You don't believe that Moses split the, the Red Sea. You don't believe Adam spoke to a snake. And you're not going to believe that God on Mount Sinai 
decided that these people, whoever the Torah identified, are obligated in the mitzvahs. There are no identifiable characteristics of Jews. The only common denominator is the religion claims that you are obligated to do the mitzvahs. Jewish identity is religious doctrine. Just like you have a kosher piece of meat, you can have a Jewish human being. Simple as that. And if you want to know what the definition of kosher is, you've got to look in the religion. Whatever the religion says is kosher is kosher. And if you want to know what a Jew is, you've got to look in the religion. And whoever the religion says is Jewish is Jewish. And therefore, you can have an atheist Jew. And the reason why he's Jewish, whether he knows it or not, is because the religion says that guy, whether he believes it or not, whether he agrees or not, the religion says he's obligated to fulfill the 613 mitzvahs. You see... This is the only consistent definition of Jewishness, and this is the definition of Jewishness that Jews have had throughout the generations. You can convert to Judaism according to Jewish religious doctrine. Uh, the reason why maternal lineage creates a Jew is because that's religious doctrine. The answer to all of these questions is that's what the religion says. And the religion has authority over Jewish identities because Jewish identity is only religious doctrine. Without that, there is no consistent definition of Jewishness. It's not even a culture. Again, are you going to tell me that Ivanka Trump and the Yemenite Jews have the same culture? They don't eat the same food, they don't speak the same language, they, they don't dress the same. In what sense do they have the same culture? An atheist American Jew and a Yemenite Orthodox Jew in Yemen or Morocco, in what sense do they have the same culture? What does it even mean? It, it, it doesn't, it, it's not intellectually consistent. Now, here's the problem. Jews always identified like that. Uh, at the Emancipation, the Enlightenment, <laughs> there are many Jews that decided they don't like the Jewish religion. They don't want to be Jewish. They want to be assimilated. What happened was that they were still persecuted by the anti-Semites. And now they had a question. If we're assimilated, if we don't follow the, the religion, why do they hate us? And so Jean-Paul Sartre said that the Jews are not the cause of anti-Semitism. The anti-Semites are the cause of Jews. A Jew by this definition is whoever the anti-Semites hate. And Jean-Paul Sartre was not the first person to say this. The first person to say this before Sartre was Theodore Herzl. Theodor Herzl, who was an athe atheist, he was more of a Christian than Jew. You know the old joke. What's the difference between Herzl and Jesus? Jesus celebrated Hanukkah. Herzl celebrated Christmas. Herzl had more leanings towards Christianity than Judaism. But when the, um, when the British Royal Commission on Alien in Immigration asked Herzl what Jewish nationalism is, he said, well, uh, I'll tell you what a nation is, and then you add the adjective Jewish. A nation is, I quote, a historical group of men of recognizable cohesion held together by a common enemy. So Major Evans Gordon asked, in the case of the Jews, who is the common enemy? He said the anti-Semites. Anti if there were no anti-Semites, according to Herzl, there would be no Jews. They have no choice. Herzl also wrote in his book, The Jewish State, we are one nation, our enemies have made us into one without our consent. Distress binds us together. So you have a bunch of people who are hated by the same group of people, the anti-Semites. And they think, what, what do we have? What commonality do we have that they still hate us? We're not religious. We're not ethnic Jews. We don't eat Cholent on Shabbos or Grunkern, which the German Jews eat. We don't speak any Jewish language, not Yiddish and not Ladino. So what? It must be that there is some commonality between us, and so a new type of Jewish identity was forged based on anti-Semitism. Hitler becomes the rabbi, and I'm sure you've all heard it today. Well, Hitler didn't distinguish between a religious Jew and a non-religious Jew, so non-religious Jews also Jew. When I was, last year I spoke in Seville for the Three Cultures Foundation, and I spoke about Jewish identity. A guy gets up during the questions session, and he asks me, says, Rabbi, you can't dismiss Hitler's definition of a Jew. So I said, Hitler is the rabbi? Hitler decides who a Jew is? What do you mean, because Hitler didn't distinguish, that means this. Hitler didn't distinguish between paternal lineage and maternal lineage either. 
That means I now obligated to consider Jews of paternal lineage Jewish? You see, but that's what happened. Without the, if you don't believe in the religion, and you don't believe in the religious identification of Jew, the religious definition of a Jew, you're stuck, and you still want to be Jewish. If you don't want to be Jewish, then fine. But if you still want to be Jewish, you're stuck trying to find a definition, which I always say is comparable to a person who doesn't believe in the number two, and wants to figure out what five minus three equals. You can figure out as whatever you want, but it's not going to work. <laughs> it's, right, it's not going to work. Uh, Jabotinsky, uh, Jabotinsky and Moses Hess said Jews are a race. Well, what are you going to do with the Sephardic Jews? So, uh, who was it? The Zionist biologist and a faculty and a member of the Board of Trustees of Hebrew University, Redcliffe Nathan Salomon, said that Yemenite Jews are not Jews. Quote, they're black with an, with an elongated skull. They're Arab half-castes. The true Jew is the European Ashkenazi. Because if Jew is a race, then why are Yemenite Jews Jews? Now, Theodor Herzl had a proof that Jews, Judaism is not a race because he, he took Israel Zangville, who was kind of ugly. Herzl considered himself handsome. And he said, me and I Zangville, we can't be of the same race. He's a Negro. <laughs> That's what he said, Herzl. He said, it can't be the same race. So Judaism doesn't make sense. It should be a race. Now, is it a, a nationality? Well, like I said, um, uh, Dennis Prager says it can't be a religion. It's, he wants to say it's a nationality because you can have atheist Jews. Here's my question. Can you have Christian Jews? If Jews are anything but a religion, if they're a nationality and ethnicity, a race, a tribe, why, just like you can have Muslims of any different race and other different ethnicities, why can't you have Jews of different, uh, why can you have Christians of, or Muslims of the Jewish ethnicity or the Jewish race? If you can have atheists, why can't you have Christian Jews? There is no viable answer to that question. In fact, Israel Zangville, the guy who Herzl said is not a Jew because, well, he is a Jew and therefore Judaism can't be racial, said that when the Jews get a state, so then the Omar Mosque will be guarded by Jews who are Muslims, and the Holy Sepulchre will be guarded by Jews who are Christians. If Judaism is a nationality, which Zionism wanted to, to create, Zionism wanted to forge, and I use the word forge over here as counterfeit, the Jewish identity, change it from religion to nationality, then of course, why can't you have Jews who are of different religions? In fact, there was a Supreme Court case in Israel about a born Jew, a guy by the name of Brother Daniel. I call him Brother Daniel because he was a Carmelite monk. He up and, uh, and applied to Israel under the law of return. There was a Supreme Court case in Israel that ruled that he is uneligible under the law of return, even though he was born Jewish. And according to Jewish law, he's Jewish, meaning he's obligated to fulfill the mitzvahs even though he doesn't believe that because he accepted another religion. But Jewish religion says, no, you can't not allow to accept that other religion. Israeli law said that he's not Jewish under the law of return. Now, if you're an atheist, and rabbis asked this to Ben-Gurion, and he did not have an answer, an atheist is eligible to be a Jew under the law of return, but a Christian not. Both of them were born Jewish. One of them says, I believe in a God, but he's a trinity. Or, I believe in a God, and he's not a trinity, but I believe in a Messiah, and he's Jesus. The other Jew says, I don't believe in any God, I don't believe in any Messiah. The, the second Jew, who doesn't believe in anything, is considered a Jew by birth, for whatever reason, but the Jew that has those beliefs and believes in Jesus is not considered a Jew by the law of return. This doesn't make any sense. It's inconsistent. Zionism wanted to transform Judaism from a religion or from religious doctrine to nationality. You could, can you be a Christian Jew? That's a question that they did not, they were unable to answer. But what they did was they took the entire Jewish doctrine and they transformed it into a nationalism. They took the Holy Land and made it into a political homeland. 
It's not. It's a holy land. In Hebrew, the word for holy land is moledes, which means the place the nation was born. And in fact, in the Israeli Declaration of Independence, it says here the nation was born. That is not true according to Judaism. We were born on Mount Sinai. I remember a nation coming out of Egypt was born on Mount Sinai, where the Bible says, Hayoim hazeni yesalom, today you have become a nation, a people, but not according to Israel. They took the holidays and made them into political days and, and, and Jewish identity. And made... Now, what Israel did, we're talking about identity. We're going to come back to the first question we had. What makes your identity an identity? Okay? Israel's the state of the Jewish people. Israel's the state of the Jewish people, the Jewish state. What they've done is they've taken a certain type of nationalism. We spoke about nationalism this morning an extremely organic nationalism because they needed to create an identity that did not exist. They want to make a Jewish state, but that entire people doesn't exist, so they had to create it. So here's what they did. There are different types of nationalism, let's say American nationalism, liberal nationalism, where the only connection between me, I live in New York, and a guy that lives in California is the same as, let's say, we are, we're members of a corporation. And we both agree to pay taxes and defend each other if we're attacked. Then you have the more organic nationalism, where an Englishman is intrinsically an Englishman, and there's an exclusivity for being, of being English. Zionism took an exclusivity of Jewishness, but they did more than just say, okay, there's such a thing intrinsically as a Jewish national. Because, see, they had no choice. What they did was, it started with Ben-Gurion. He invented an ideology. He didn't invent it. He applied it to the Jews called Mamlachtius, which in English translated would be statism, which basically means that the interests of the people are not what the people are interested in. The interests of the, of the people are defined by the interests of the state. What's good for the state is good for the people. The state is the focus of the values of the people and the primary source of people's symbols and the people's spirit. When the, when the Germans wanted to give Israel money, reparations money for the Holocaust, People asked Ben-Gurion, how could you take money, blood money, from these Nazi murderers? And he said, if the Holocaust victims were alive today, they would say, whatever's good for Israel, that's what we want. The interests of the Jewish people are no longer the interests of the Jewish people. The interests of the Jewish people are defined by the interests of Israel. More, what they did was they took a real Hegelian kind of nationalism, and they said that, well, you know this new thing that came out, that anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism? Do you know why they think that? So Yair Lapid, he's one of, he wants to be prime minister, one of the politicians in Israel. He explained, very simple. He said, because Israel is the essence of the spirit of the Jews. That means that if you don't like the Jews, but you like Israel, you're good. If you, do like, if you don't like Israel, but you do like the Jews, then you're an anti-Semite, because the Jews are not the Jews. The spirit of the Jews, the definition of who the Jews are, that's Israel. Okay? That's why they believe anti-Semitism is anti-Zionism. All the other reasons won't make any sense. This at least makes sense. There's a method to this madness. It's mad. But it, they, they created this, this artificial identity, but they, they went even further. When they say that you can criticize Israel's policies, but you can't deny its right to exist, I have a question. And I've asked this to many Zionists. I have a policy that I, want, that I want you to eliminate. You have a right to exist. But I have a policy I want you to eliminate. You claim to be the state of the Jews, the Jewish state. That's a policy. Eliminate that. You can exist, but that's a policy. You have a policy that you're the Jewish state. It's not even a policy. It's an illusion. Because according to the, Jewish, the religious definition of Jewishness, there's no such thing as a Jewish state. They claim they represent all the Jewish people, the way America represents the Americans. Netanyahu wrote in one of his books that the reason why anti-Semitism is anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism is because just like you cannot want uh, Japan not to exist but say you're pro-Japanese, you can't want Israel to exist and say you're pro-Israeli. No, he didn't say Israeli. He said you can't want Israel to not exist and say you're pro-Jew. Israel is the representative of all the Jews. It's, by the way, Look at this level of nationalism. It's the only country, not only today, in the history of the world, that claims to be the country, the representative, the nation state of people who are not his, their, its citizens, never was its citizens, 
don't plan on ever being its citizens, never lived there, have nothing to do with it, but because I'm born Jewish. Netanyahu claims he's my prime minister. Israel claims they're my state. There is no country in the world, so the Vatican, because you know they represent Catholic, Catholics, but there is no country in the history of the world that ever claimed such a national, such an organic type nationalism. There are Arab countries, but no Muslim country is a Muslim country in the sense that Israel claims to be a Jewish country. No Muslim country claims that they're the nation state of all the Muslims. Israel claims to be the nation state of all the Jews. In the history of the world, there was never such a nationalism. And what they claimed in their identity, the original question we asked, and I'll end with this, the original question we asked is, where's the me? We have more time? Five minutes, okay. We asked, where is the me? What is that characteristic of me that makes me me? Well, if I tell a Zionist that you, Israel, can exist, just stop being the Jewish state. Well, no, you just eliminated Israel. You see, what they did was they took a policy and they said, this policy is my identity. They took my question, what makes me me? And they answered it. What makes Israel Israel? Well, we could stop the occupation and still be Israel. We could change I don't know, laws about religion and even not religion, maybe even separation of church and state and still be Israel. But once that policy that we're the Jewish state is gone, we're no longer Israel. Our identity is erased. So what they did was, it's a trick. You take a policy and you say, no, this policy is my identity. And if you don't like this policy, you want to destroy me. Say, I'm a Met fan, fan of New York Mets. It's a baseball team out in down south. And um, I say, you know what? If the New York Mets disappear, my identity as a Met fan is gone, and I am no longer Yaakov Shapiro. That is the me. It's me and my arm, me and my legs, me and my eyes. The me is the being a Met fan. And therefore, if you try, to take away the New York Mets, you have now tried to destroy me, to erase me, to eliminate me. That type of identity is more than, a, it's a delusion on top of a delusion. The whole idea of identity is a delusion, but here they took a policy and they chose that that policy should be their identity, and now everybody is obligated to recognize that policy as their identity, and if not, you want to destroy me. So here is an example of how identity is created, and it started off with Theodore Herzl's idea that now all of this is unnecessary. They don't really have to be Israel, they don't have to be Jews, they don't have to be anything. But the problem is why do the anti-Semites hate us? You see, if a bunch of people are held hostage by terrorists in a mall, so they don't forge an identity together, even though they, but, but over here, the reason why the people in the, in the, the terrorists wanna attack the mall is not because they hate us, it's because they want money or ransom or something. Over here, why do they hate us? There must be there. So anti-Semitism is not merely something that Zionist identity has to deal with. It is intrinsic to their identity. The stronger anti-Semitism is, the stronger their Jewishness is. Without anti-Semitism, their Jewishness is very weak. That Jewishness became a nationality. And this nationality became a state, and the state became the embodiment of the people, even people that don't want to buy into this identity. And a particular policy of that state became the core identity, such that it's not only uh, an identity, which is delusion number one, it's not only uh, the anti semite Hitler decides who you are, that's number two. It's not only, okay, the state becomes the identity of the people, but the state becomes identity of people that have nothing to do with the state. That's number, but number four, on top of all this, this little policy that we're the state of the Jewish people, that becomes Israel's identity. Without that, then Israel is erased, and if Israel's erased, Jews are erased, because Israel's the spirit of the Jews, and that makes you an anti-Semite if you oppose that particular policy of Israel. So you see from here, this was the original question, why are people obsessed with identity? Well, sometimes identity is forged by people being in a situation together that they cannot explain other than they must have something in common, like the anti-Semites hating Jews that aren't, that no way are visibly Jewish. 
So they created this psychological connection with each other that we will call identity. But then, nationalism, a policy of nationalism, organic nationalism, enforces this identity and intensifies it such that if you believe in multiculturalism or even if you don't believe in their policy, you, you become their biggest enemy because they look at you as somebody who wants to erase them. If you want to cut my nails, you're not erasing me. They're my nails. But if I believe that my nails are the core part of my identity, you want to cut my nails, you want to kill me and you're my enemy. That's an example. That's Zionist nationalism, that's Zionist identity. Any questions? Applause for the first question.